are we live now? Maybe we are. Very good morning, very good afternoon, very good evening, wherever you are in the world. How's it going? Anthony Tong, hey, how's it going? Uh, give us a wave, give us a comment, let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, drop it in the comments, let me know. Where are you in the world? Uh, what's going down? Where you are? We're gonna wait a couple of minutes, well, a minute or so to get everybody on board. I just realized I left my coffee over there, so I gotta go get that. And we need to also get our special guest today, Ken Etzel on board. Let's see if I can find him. Is he there? Can we hear me? Hi, everybody, welcome. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Drop us a comment. Can you hear me, Ken? Hey, hey. Oh my gosh, there we go. We did it, buddy. Figured it out. Oh dear. Dude, I just realized I left my coffee over there, so I just need to go grab it. Um, and we're going to give people one minute to join so that they get the, the full experience. How are you? I have no complaints. This is good. This is yeah. good. 2020 has been a one. Um, for sure. But it's been really good for me, actually. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, it's been really good to be home a lot. Right. I don't get to be home very often. I mean, that's yeah. always the question that I like to start with, um, is is where are you in the world? Uh, we're 11.02, we can start. Where in the world are you? You're at home, you just said. Where's that? Uh, I live in Bishop, California, and uh, here in the Eastern Sierra, and it's been a pretty magical fall. Um, yeah, it's crisp and golden light, and we could use a little snow, but it's been really nice. Above like average rock climbing in Bishop as well. Average, yeah. Above average, maybe. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Have you been <laughs> to climb or has it been all work? Um, no, I've been climbing a bunch this fall. It feels really good. Um, it's kind of something, my own personal climbing is something that I haven't been, I don't feel like I've pursued in a long, long time. Yeah. So it feels good to uh, to be focusing on that a little bit and just like with the things slowing down this year and everything, it's been cool to like dive in. Right. It's funny because I have climbing, you know, as a photographer, filmmaker, videographer, you know, climbing is a professional right down at the other end of the questions, like towards the end of the interview. But let's, um, it's not an interview, it's a chat, but let's start there. Like, you're a, would you say you're a climber first or a photographer first? Mm, I think... It started as a being a climber first, right? Um, but then I think I've de dedicated a lot of my life to the camera, and um, it's hard to balance both. Like, right. I can't just I like mean, that's go. That's where I was going with it. Yeah, I can't go climbing for the day and take my camera. You know, maybe you'll be able to like snag one banger image or something in nice light. But, like, if you really want to be storytelling and doing quality work, like, I have to be in it. Yeah. So yeah. that's and that's then, a hard balance. And then when you're not working, I often don't want to just go to the crag. I want to go do something else because like, you got to turn off your mind. Yeah. Um, I ride a lot of mountain bikes, a lot, and uh, I, s like, ski a lot, and um, – run and do all the things and um it's funny it's like a i consider myself like a mediocre mountain athlete like i do a lot of different things but i'm not necessarily good at any of them right. so um but it's fun yeah it's funny that you mentioned like squeezing a root in maybe you know i remember that whole time we were in say used together back in 2018 and we did like one day of climbing or it was like one afternoon of climbing. Alex had given up on the project. It was like the last day. We were like, dude, let's go do some pictures. So we like went We did two together. and we're like, I was like, damn, dude, I'm done. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That was partially our fault, though, because we got on like a 7B plus to warm up or something. Remember yeah. that thing with the flow stone at the top? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Slickery, uh, slippery say you speed. Yeah, sure. it, was, it was something. I feel like the name was something to do with the knee. Yeah, that's funny. So, um, 
you know, personal climbing generally takes a back foot, but at the moment you're managing to, you know, get out. Bouldering mainly, or like what's what's happening there? Yeah, I try to climb routes when I can, but um, mostly at home. I mean, I think everyone knows Bishop bouldering, and and when the temps are good, it's really good, and it's really nice. People have been respecting, you know, travel restrictions here in California this year, mm-hmm. and um, so being a local, I feel really fortunate to have the opportunity to climb in the places, and they. It reminds me of like many years ago where it's just a little bit quieter, you know. Yeah. I probably right. shouldn't be telling people that, but um it feels good and it's really nice, like our community's really small and our hospital's small and um it's I'm really proud of the climbing community for respecting that space, but then it's also really nice to like indulge in a little bit. Yeah, right. And um, what's um your preferred style of climbing? You know, if you get to choose a perfect day, what what is it? Uh, my favorite style of climbing is like long ropeless days in the Alpine for sure. Just like 12, 14 hour days, constantly moving, you're mixing running and then just like soloing like up to five, eight and, and just moving, you know, that's my favorite. But in terms of like difficulty climbing, I definitely prefer bouldering over sport climbing um, or hard track climbing for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Liam? Uh, I mean, I'm a sport and trad climber at heart, you know, like mm-hmm. that's kind of how I came up. And then I became more of a boulder out of necessity, you mm-hmm. know, like traveling around the world, like solo mainly, meeting up with someone here to shoot, meeting up with someone there to shoot. You know, you're lucky if you can, you know, find someone that's got exactly the same schedule to get a session in. So, yeah, I kind of became a boulderer because it was easier um you know to just like get out and, and have a session but um if someone calls me and says hey like let's go rope up and, and have a day of it like I'm psyched I'm really psyched and mm-hmm. you know, it's similar to you like running and moving fast in the mountains such a special special experience like when I was back in the Lake District I remember we used to just head out you know see how many routes and crags we could link up in a day run between them, you know, one rope, like, linking six or seven pitches into one and, like, similar climbing. Yeah, like, something very special about being able to move in the mountains quickly. Yeah, those are magical days, and then it's really fun, like, having that, sharing that experience with someone, too, you know? Like, it's a different, it's a different space, I think. Yeah. Cool. What's your, um, what's your favorite kind of climbing to shoot? Um, for me, it's more about, um, the energy around it rather than the style, I think. Um, cause first and foremost, I feel like I, I really enjoy like celebrating rock climbing and sharing rock climbing and, and photographing it, but I really love to tell like the human story. And so, you know, if somebody is really invested in what they're doing, like sharing that is the funnest part for me. And it's often the portrait after the send that I like the most rather than like the actual, like amazing climbing photo. Um, But um, I don't know, you know, like I just did a, a post in my Instagram from oh, a couple weeks ago, but it was from a trip to Canada I did in, I think, 2017. Mm-hmm. It was with Alex Magos mm-hmm. and Sonny Trotter. And uh, after Alex had basically obliterated the Bow Valley sport climbing, we went and climbed Mount Louis, and this route that Sonny and Tommy Caldwell had put up. And Alex totally flashed it. And that was like a, an amazing day. And, and I didn't climb at all. I just I just jugged off the rope, you know? Right. And, uh, but it was just like such a fun adventure and you get to see like so many different sides of everyone. Like, you know, it was like a 20 hour day or 24 hour day or something. And you just get to see like, you know, everyone wake up in the morning and then you, everyone has this high and then, you know, Alex is sending in the wind and then we're climbing in the dark and repelling through the night and you just get to see like all the aspects of everyone. So I love like 
the shared adventure like that's the shared experience like i love being in it with the people like that's so your stories of that day as well like both of your stories in fact it's interesting like, you're talking about the day when you did the path right no that's a different one but that was the same trip oh, okay dude, yeah it's just like the way this thing called alex the shining tells it. Oh, that's it yeah 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 but the way that alex tells it and the way that you tell it you know like you like looking at him putting the gear in and him being like cool ken says it's good and like such a good story yeah i would love to hear alex's story i, w I wish he was here to so we could compare notes but He's yeah watching. when he when I, we flashed the, when he flashed the path, it was like one of the coolest things in climbing I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, we kind of joked that he was like learning how to play skier at the bottom and Sonny had to teach him and all that. But Sonny did call a friend to ask what the gear was, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and he placed a couple cams and they were like all tipped out. I was like, no. And, um, but yeah, he, uh, you know, the crux is towards the end of the route and he's just like hanging out on this, on this hold. I assume it's good. It's good for him. <laughs> and, uh, he was like, Ken, where does the green one go? Which is like the green C3. It's a pretty small cam. I think it was a C3. I think that's right. And I was like, Oh, it's up and left. And that's in like vertical in the vertical crack. He's like, okay, cool. He like does two moves and goes to place the cam He's like, Ken, it won't fit. And I was like, sorry, Alex. I'm just dangling in space. And this is the other thing. He all of a sudden decided he was going to go, and I wasn't rigged. So I'm, like, on the rope, and I'm spinning around in circles. And, like, as I'm, like, flash, as I'm, like, coming by, I, like, snap, snap, couple frames, and I spin around in a circle. I'm, like, snap, snap. I had no, like, time to, like, rig any, like, stabilization. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, Alex. It's a couple more moves up and left. He was like, oh, shit. Down climbs back to the jug. Shake, 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 shake. Does the moves. Like, I think he just grabbed the cam like this and shoved it in. And he was like, <laughs> he was like how does that look? And I was just like, looks amazing, dude. And uh, he clipped it and then, like, did, like, the V8 crux or whatever and to the anchor. And, um didn't die i mean yeah i mean you would have been a massive whip you know like a 20 meter whip or something you know like yeah, huge yeah. but uh it's cool working with people like alex that are so gifted and the only thing that's going to hold them back is their mind right right um i want to talk a bit about your process um but different parts of the process like your creative process in the sense of you know how you visualize and you know conceptualize but also the process of like shooting, for example, something like um, Rock Punked, you know, where you were waiting essentially on a big send or where you were in Margalef and, you know, the whole Perfecto Mundo story. So I want to like touch as many aspects of the process as possible. Let's start with, um, you know, visualizing and, you know, like literally conceptualizing. How, how does that happen for you? Um. Well, there's so many different tools to tell stories today, right? From words to stills to motion and um, to Polaroids to all the different things, right? right. For me, uh, it all starts with connection with the person mm -hmm. I'm working with, especially when it's a big project like that. And because I really want to be close to them and I want to be um, friends with them and I want like them to like, remove the walls and the barriers and be open and not be like super distracted by the camera. So a lot of people I work with and shoot with, like I really prioritize our friendship first and I spend a lot of time um, sitting with that and being with them and, and gaining mutual trust. Mm -hmm. And then from there I tend to like, um, I tend to be a fly on the wall. I spend a lot, and that kind of goes back to your original question about like my relationship with climbing and am I a climber first or a photographer first? And I think I have to say I'm a photographer first because I'm willing to sacrifice my own climbing to catch that magical moment that's like relaxed and calm and not posed and um, not forced. Like it's just real and I just like wait for the light and, you know, as a, like a director, like you kind of like, you know, like 
hey, you know, you should try this route in like a little bit, or this one would be really cool over here, you know, because the light's going to be right, and and you miss a lot that way, and mm-hmm. sometimes you get some bangers, and and but for me, Mike, I always want my work to be experiential experiential for the viewer like i want you to feel like you're there like i don't want it to feel like it's some construct like um with with lights or um with something that's like obviously posed the person's like shaking out or whatever like patagonia just posted a photo of alex resting on bibliography from that first trip that we were on together Mm -hmm. and um you know, it's real. He was trying to send and his eyes are closed and he's relaxed and it's just like, there's a calmness about it. And like, you can know that he's in it. And like, those are the moments I just wait for. And like, mm-hmm. um, sometimes you wait years, you know, for the things to line up and it's about patience and confidence, I think. Mm-hmm. But in terms of rot punked, you know, um, which with is Alex. amazing, by the way. We still haven't spoken. To, I mean, I think I texted you after I saw it, but this is the first time we've spoken face-to-face. Like, what a great piece of work, man. Absolutely Thanks. stunning. I was Thanks. psyched to see it. In fact, we watched it with Alex and Chelsea and Sonny in San Francisco. Uh-huh. Right. Um, that was where we saw it. But, yeah. Like, cool. So good. Let's Thanks. talk about Rock Punk. Um, yeah, that was a labor of love for sure. You know, we all, all of us put in so much time, Chelsea and Khalil, the editor and Alex Lowther, the producer from Patagonia and, um, and so many other people, Alex, obviously, and everyone involved, like Mm -hmm. you and anyone at the crag and the Blairs and everything. And, um, I think traveling with Alex, for the years and just watching him climb, you know, from lucid dreaming to the finish line, um, to watching him do all these amazingly hard sport routes and this trip through Canada, you know, like, like one moment that really stands out is when he did the one day ascent of dream catcher in Squamish. Right. And it was a really intense experience for him. And there's, you can just feel like, the pressure he puts on himself, it's like tangible, like it's thick. You can like taste it. And, and I tried to like capture it through photos for years and I couldn't. And, um, and I knew that it had to be a film and it was going to take a lot of trust from Alex and me because I was going to ask a lot of him and I was really going to expose something that like he protects of himself. Right. It's like your inner vulnerability, like, um, and so I tried to be really patient with it and just really be on his schedule and everything. But ultimately I just wanted to tell the story of like the internal battle and how hard it is to like, he's chosen this path and then yes, he's extremely gifted and talented and genetic freak, but like he puts so much effort into it, you know? Yeah. And so that was that whole basically year or two of shooting was just like following him and just uh, waiting things for to unfold and perfecto mundo hanging on the rope every day and like, but being with him so much, I knew when he was going to send, you know, like, yeah, sure. so you're, you're ready, you know, and you know how it is. Like when he's like, Oh, it's going down. It's going down. Like, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So so I think the choice of making a film out of that was very intentional and mm-hmm. um, hopefully I won't have to subject to subject him to that again. But uh, um, to me, I didn't want to make a superhero film yeah. showing him climbing this, these amazing rocks. Like we all know that he already is, you know, I just wanted to really show the human side of him and something that everyone can relate to and know that, no matter how exceptional you are, what you do, whether whatever your job is, whatever your athletic pursuits are, um, you have to work hard for them. And like, I mean, and that, that's what life's about, right? How was it, you know, watching that final send of bibliography from afar, you know, like 
I certainly would have given anything to have been able to be in France for that. And, you know, I'm sure you were the same. Of course, it was amidst a global pandemic and, you know, lockdowns and all that other stuff that comes with it. What was, what was that like for you as someone that was so attached to it? Um, it's funny because, uh, like, it was like a, the, the, that rock punk is like a pseudo family to me in a way yeah, yeah. like um you put so much energy and emotion and time to it and there's like disputes and there's like moments of celebration you know there's highs there's lows there's like all the things right and um and it's just kind of this little dysfunctional family <laughs> and uh and it goes out in the world and it was like i'm blown away by how well it was received and it's been awesome and I kind of, you know, like dealt with my, um, you know, like just like, I don't know, like, I don't want to say divorcing from the film, but like yeah, right. there's remorse. Like you give, as an artist, you give everything to every, every piece that you get into. And then there's just, you know, like a depression afterwards, to be honest. And then it was funny because. I was so psyched for Alex to send and I was really happy to think about like the lack of pressure and just him there climbing and enjoying his time and getting a break from the Olympics and all the training. And it really made me happy. And then I was really happy that there was on film and there was going to be a piece about it and so much footage that we shot that was never seen, you know, cause that was the whole original story. of yeah, for sure. And it basically wasn't in the film. Um, but then once it launched, I kind of got drugged through the emotional mud again, to be honest. It made me pretty sad for a couple of days and just like stirring up a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings and missing a lot of different people and wishing I could be there. But um, ultimately just psyched for him, man. Like, yeah. yeah, the progress we've seen that kid go through over the years, you know, it's cool. And that final film as well, you know, I, I actually watched it again last night Um I was like, you wanted to see it again, and I was like, fuck, it's good, man. It's great. Yeah. It's great to see all that footage in there, and like seeing this. I mean, obviously, it's different watching it from our perspectives, having been there, you know. But like seeing the little scenes, and you know, Sam's van parked down in the valley, and you know, just yeah. little things. I was like, oh, jeez, man. It was yeah. Gold. It was a golden time. It was cool. Um, yeah, so psyched to see Sam in there, like. Yeah, man. Yeah, we interviewed him. It was such a great interview. And it's just like, he's got such a big heart and just wants to support and loves Alex so much. And it's hard to like not put these amazing people on the film. Like, I just want yeah. to put everyone in, but not everyone fits. And so I was really happy to see that. Dude, that was so good as well. And this little quote, like, you know, he's like operating at the next level. This could be like 9B plus. It could be 9 I mean, it could be 10A. We yeah. just don't know. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sam knows. He genuinely means it as well, you know, like it's real. Yeah. It's so good. It's cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> Alex has just commented Mud Falcon. Yeah. Schlamm Falke. Schlamm Falke. <laughs> oh, geez. We'll save that one for another time, eh? Um, what's it like, you know, let, let's move away from Alex for a second and talk about athletes in general. You know, like, how do you. I guess you talked a lot about, about your approach in terms of um, the storytelling and the, the film, but when it comes to photos, how do you approach working with an athlete uh, in other sports, not just climbing? Um, well, it all depends on what it's about too. Like if it's like some commercial shoot, you know, right. like you don't have the time to create these relationships and you're just yeah. trying to make banger after banger and banger and check all the boxes. Like, Jimmy Webb and I have actually worked a lot together, but never in like a personal way where we're just traveling together and shooting. It's always been like on a commercial type thing and um, which is really fun. But like, I think our like our relationship in terms of photos has a lot of room to grow, you know, mm -hmm. but um, and maybe someday we'll travel that way. Um, but even in other sports, I think when I first started, um, like my professional career, 
um, it was really based in me being a participant in what I was doing. So right. whether it's like ski mountaineering or whatever, and like I'm there with the athletes, a lot of ultra running, like I don't even know how many times I've uh, traversed the freaking Sierra Nevada on foot, you know, running along with cameras and Grand Canyon and um, crossing the Grand Canyon, running the river and back and all these things with camera gear. And uh, I just always want to like give the athlete space that they need and um, but support them. Like hopefully I have some snacks in my back pocket and, <laughs> Um, just really want to support them and make them feel comfortable and, and doing what they're doing. And, um, and then for me, my philosophy is it's always up to me to capture the moments to like set up the situation. So magic can happen and then being patient and what waiting for it to unfold. Right. Sometimes, sometimes you get burned. It's hard, but, um, but yeah, I think it's just a lot forming a lot of trust, you know? And yeah. then sometimes you work with athletes and they're like, Oh, that's not the way I work. What do you want me to do? You're like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, <Jim. laughs> yeah, let's, let's construct these, uh, let's construct these ideas and let's make it happen. So, cool. yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the environment. Um, certainly something that I've, you know, when we've had the chance to hang out we've always somehow I've ended up chatting about, pollution or the environment or ecology or you know like all sorts of di different subjects that kind of have that at the center and I'm always fascinated by your perspective um the like direction that I'd love to take it is like our responsibilities as creatives or as climbers or both um and kind of how that fits or like how your um what's the word I'm looking for like what's your philosophy around responsibility in, in the environment? Um, that's a big one. Uh, it is big. <laughs> well, before I was a photographer, I was a biologist and I have a master's in ecology and biology. And, um, for a long time I studied birds and, uh, used them as environmental indicators of ecosystem health. So essentially like canary in the coal mine kind of thing, but sure. used it on the, as the, on the planet. Um, it's hard because, um, well, I guess the one thing that I think about is I moved into photography because I didn't feel like I was a good enough scientist to make change in the world, to make real change. And I thought, well, maybe if I'm a photographer, I can make that happen because photos worth a thousand words and all these things. And so I've really, my ultimate goal in life is to fuse like this environmental work with imagery, mm -hmm. um, which I've had mixed success in. I think I could do better. Um, but then at the same time, it's like, it's hard to not stand on the soapbox and preach to people about what you should do. But then like some years I've, I'm on six continents, you know, and I'm flying and my carbon footprint is huge. And, but ultimately my goal in life is to leave the earth a better place than when I arrived. Right. And so trying to give back however I can and whether that's um, through education, through storytelling through science um through just supporting organizations and what they do mm -hmm. um but ultimately I, I try to eat well i try to eat locally i try to eat organic um i try to like not buy pl cheap plastic crap and um I, i've aligned myself with patagonia a lot for main reason is because i really believe in their messaging and mm -hmm. uh yeah, and, and just trying to f figure out a way to make the planet a better place, you know? Right. Voting <laughs> here in the U.S., what a crazy year. So intense. Um, um, yeah, the U.S. is... I think this year has taught me a lot about mm, keeping my eyes here 
a lot more than I have. And just like, okay, there's a lot of work to do here at home. And, you know, we say all these things as Americans, like leaders of the free world and all these funny things, you know, and it's just like, it's like, well, we're not leading anybody, you know, we're making a mess. Well, unless you're talking about a death count, then. then Yeah. We're We're the best. We're the greatest. (laughs) (laughs) It's a mess. You're here. You've seen it. Yeah, dude. But you live in like, Potentially the most liberal liberal bubble in the country. Yeah, um, and even even here we've seen it. You know, oh yeah, from like Trump pro Trump graffiti on the sidewalks. You know, mm-hmm. even here. So yeah, nobody's immune from it, but for sure we we definitely have the bubble. Right. Um. Yeah, it's interesting that like 2020 has been a really interesting forcing function as well. Like. Both of us would have been on a bunch of flights, no doubt, this year. You know, you would have been in Seuss almost certainly for a send if Alex had been there or, you know, for, for, for whatever. Um, and yet we we haven't. So in the negatives of, um, you know, being locked down, there's definitely some positives to come out of it, right? Oh, absolutely. I think, man, I mean, it's hard to s- it's hard to speak to this without like just my privilege, like sure. shining through for sure. But, um, cause I, I have it really well, you know, yeah. like my life is great and I live in an amazing place and, um, I have work, you know, all these things, but, uh, there's, it's been a hard year on a lot of different levels and the pandemic has impacted me personally with my family and all these things. And it's been really hard, but like, there's always a lesson to learn, I think. And like, there's a silver lining to everything. And I think, um, I think if we don't come out better because of this, then we're kind of missing the plot. And I say that in the most gentle way I can, but, um, yeah, there's always ways to be better. And, and, you know, I don't need to be going to six continents this year or next year, you know, like maybe I can do a couple trips and then focus on um, important things here at home. And yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot to be done here. So it's cool. It's, it's inspired me to focus less on recreation and more on the heavier impacts of, of the world. I think. Yeah. It's throw Megos under the buzz a bit more. It feels like we're getting heavy. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know where I want to go with it. I just feel like we could throw him under the bus because I know he's watching. I mean, I can't believe nobody calls him like SpongeBob SquarePants or anything, you know, with his little twig legs and his affinity for yellow. But dude, did you? I don't know. Like in the in that um, bibliography send video, like when you get that little below shot at the end, or when Hans gets that little below shot at the end, he's got some beefy quads going on there. All that hiking in seas. Putting a bit of meat on the chicken leg. I can't believe he hasn't like hired a donkey or something to walk him up there. Yeah, he has. It's called Liam and Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Hiking yeah. all the bloody shit up and down. Oh yeah. my gosh. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's always um, it's always funny working with Alex. Yeah, especially, and I know this is the same for you because he is, you know, such a good friend and like kind of having to go through the emotional attachment of, you know, him having a really rough time and the creative attachment of like wanting to get that, like wanting to capture that, use it to an extent. Um, Yeah, when you were talking about trust, it it absolutely is. It comes down to trust so much. What's he saying? He says he discovered an e-bike to, like, bloody e-bikes. I love them. Yeah, have you got one? No, but I get to use them often. So, but yeah, for for shooting and stuff, it's an amazing tool. That's hilarious. Um, favorite tonight's shoes? Um, I like the new one. Is it the Mastia, the blue one? Oh my gosh, yeah. Dude, it's so I, good. They're pretty sweet, like uh, super precise. Um, I really like the heel and um, the lining on them is kind of amazing. It makes my foot feel all, all good and fuzzy. 
I think like everyone that I've done it with Drew, that I've done this with Drew, Ruana, and with Jimmy, and all three of us are now four, including you, also the last year. It's what an amazing shoe. I'm just looking to see if any good questions have come in through the comments. Alex said you were a biker, not a climber. He doesn't know. <laughs> Number one commenter on this is Alexander Magos. Love that. I bouldered 9C the other day. That's pretty good. What? No. 7C. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an American. Are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on. 7C. Yeah. Dude, crushing. So take that, Alex. Yeah, Alex who? Megos. What was it? What was the send? Um, this thing in Rock Creek here. Nice. Yeah. So I'm pretty amped on it. Love that. Been trying Dude, it for a long time. It still pains me to say that, despite having been here now for almost two years, I've never been to, to Bishop. Well, you, it sounds like you need to, to make a trip over. Dude, Do you have a car? Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we just got a Tesla actually. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so I've got to like figure out how to do the electric scene all the way over there. I think there's stops. I think you can make it happen. I'll figure it out. We just had a new baby, so. I'm uh, pinned down what? at home for a while. Yeah. You just had a baby? Yeah, she's uh, 10 days old. No way. Congrats, Liam. <laughs> yeah, Holy cow. Man. Yeah. Crazy. Wow, time. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, we've not Look at you, you're looking all chipper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not. why I'm so happy. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Congrats. So 2020 has been amazing. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's what I'm saying, like, 2020 has been a total blast. Like we found out just before the pandemic that you know that Megan was pregnant, and then wow. she was born. She was born ten days ago. We have a question: How do you decide when to shoot stills versus motion? That's a good question. Um, I usually go into each day knowing what my priorities are going to be, mm-hmm. and so I can flip between the two, but um, I make a pretty hard, fast decision in the day. I'm like, today's a motion day. Maybe I'll have the still camera and um, pull it out for the, the right moments. Right. Um, as a f- still photographer first over a filmmaker, I think um, I tend to um, prioritize good light for the still camera. Right. And I'll tend to shoot like the motion in all shade or whatever. Um, But that's just my personal preference and what's of value to me. Um, That's a really good question. I think that's a hard question to answer, especially nowadays where so many jobs, they want you to do both. Like a lot of jobs, they'll send me somewhere and I'll shoot, you know, like can you shoot stills and then can you gather some B roll? Yeah. uh, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And so it's hard. Yeah, you're like, cool, I can, you know, there's no way I could, like, shoot primary motion and then be expected to come back with a grip of bangers, you know? If yeah, still right. like, I can't do that. Maybe somebody can, I don't know. But, like, I also am, like, pretty small crew, and sometimes I have somebody with me, but most of the time it's just me. Yeah, so. right. How did you find that transition? Because, like, I pretty much I just I shot bits of video but I just couldn't bring myself to do it like I it just didn't turn me on you know like going out and shooting stills it like fires me up it fuels me and like video never really did that for me and so that's why I've never really explored it like what was the transition like for you I think it's just based on storytelling it's using the tool for the story yeah and you know, like Rob Punk is a great example of like, oh, I want to tell this bigger story um, and I can't, haven't been able to do it through editorial and through stills. It's like, it, it this deserves motion. Sure. Um, and so that was the big inspiration for that. Um, I mean, is that the first just time sometimes... you really went into video was for the Rob Punk? Um, that was my first like film, but I had been shooting motion for years, you know, oh, okay. kind of B-roll on the back end yeah, for yeah. clients a lot. Um, 
and to be honest, a lot of that I never really put that much energy into and never even really looked at it. I just sent it off and it was good to go. Um, mm -hmm. Alex and I did that short little lucid dreaming piece and that might have been my first foray into motion actually. Really? I think so. Um, yeah, I frantically bought like mics and everything right before that and um, and I shot it on my my D4S and old school yeah There's just uh, yeah <laughs> and just uh uh yeah scrapped it together it worked out i guess but someone asked here Kristen, uh, has social media affected the way that you take photos for sure um okay let's we'll that again how has social media <laughs> affected the way you take photos <laughs> Um, I try not to let it drive. I think everyone knows that your favorite photo that you take maybe won't even won't get as many likes as you, sure. you know, there's like a certain recipe that's successful in Instagram, for example, um, that I don't always agree with. And so I kind of try to fight it, <laughs> but, uh, I try not to let it decide what I want in the moment. Um, but I think it probably does consciously, you know, um, I think one of the things that it's changed is how I distribute my imagery mm -hmm. and, and what clients want. And so, yeah, it changes the structure of it very much. And, and then also like, I don't want to put a bunch of B work out on social media cause I don't want that to represent my work. Right. But then it's hard That's to put, true. A work out there because it devalues it. So okay. it's, it's a hard balance to find line. And most of my social media stuff is either just like personal work when I'm out shooting and I'm like, Oh, that's, that's a beautiful photo and I'll post okay. it up or it'll be old photography that I've done for a client or something, you know, that's a year or two out. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's really hard to be patient with that. Yeah. Right. Um, but then at other times when, events are happening and cool things are going down. Um, you know, brands like it when you, when you throw in the current events. And so that's good yeah, too. Sure. But um, I like a lot of portraiture and I like, like a lot of like details and textural shots and of course, big landscapes of climbing and stuff like that. And um, the big landscapes of climbing usually work on social media, but portraiture and, and like, you know, details of hands and, yeah, stuff like unless that. that's like what you're doing all the time and you've like cultivated that audience. Right, right. Yeah. Like I've been shooting a lot of mountain biking the last few years, but to be honest, I don't really post much of it because to me it's just kind of like an imp a personal endeavor. Um, and that's not what my audience is, which is kind yeah. of weird, you know? And it's funny to like play to that, and I try not to, but um, that's real. I think it's a really mm -hmm. good question, Kristen, for sure. Um, she also asks, and I like this question a lot, how do you cultivate your creativity? Um, for me, that's about uh, spending time by myself, like recreating, mm -hmm. running or riding or climbing, going bouldering by myself and having that personal space, reading, sleeping, reducing stress in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just have to find that clarity, you know, like the whole year of filming for rope punk to like, I felt so uncreative and just so tapped out in so many ways, like just getting pulled in so many different directions. And I, you know, I just like the last thing I cared about was making a photograph and uh, yeah. um, it's hard. That's really hard, you know? And so, for me, it's about taking time for myself and space away. Like certain years when you're just job to job to job to job to job, like I'm just relying, kind of relying on my recipe for that yeah. that time period. And then it takes time at home, create that space that sure. really helps. I guess that's yeah. where like you just can't um, you can't cheat that stuff. Like when you have the experience and 
you know, you literally know that you can point the camera and get the shot because that's just what you do, is that you are literally going through the motions. And yeah, you know, you're not going to create a masterpiece that you're like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing that I've ever done. But you'll get what you need to get, like get the client happy and then get trying to recharge. Yeah, and I think a lot of that comes back to what we were talking about earlier about having like making sure that everything's in place. You know, your pre-production is really important of like right. you plan out what you want and have some sort of vision of what you want and just to like, get all those balls rolling and hope hopefully everything comes together at the right time, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's like, there's some hand waving, there's some puppeteering and there's some just hard ass work, you know? And, and a bottle of red wine at the end. Yeah. Ideally <laughs> <laughs> good coffee in the morning. Oh my gosh, dude. Maybe a snack in the morning, in the afternoon. Yeah. Coffee. Like, the camp at so you grinding the coffee in the morning, getting the coffee on the go, aeropress, hit the trail, work, 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 come down, get Megas on the cooking scene. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about CEUs is you don't have to go anywhere until noon. Right. Right. Slow mornings with hands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I enjoy that a lot. Dude. Well, listen, we're coming up to, we're over 45 minutes, in fact. Um mm -hmm. It's been so good to uh, to reconnect face to face. It's been such a long time, and um, for sure we need to we need to get in uh, get some climbing in together. I'd love to uh, to do that, mate. Absolutely, Liam. Um, um, let's say a big thanks, of course, to everyone that's tuned in. It's been great to to uh, have everyone along, and a big thanks, of course, to Tanaya uh, for their behind the scenes series. Um, and Ken, thanks for opening up and sharing those stories and all those priceless insights um <laughs> into you know your work and your process etc yeah thanks liam thanks for the good questions and uh it's good to see you bud yeah well thanks so much this will be available on tonight's blog i believe and also as a replay on their um instagram uh, in the meantime you can follow ken on instagram at ken underscore etzel um my name's liam it's been a pleasure and we will catch you next time cheers ken cheers thanks buddy Thank you.